Well, it feels like it's now or never time for Andy Reid and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles seem to be unraveling. They've lost two straight games, 3-3 three and three now on the season. They just fired their defensive coordinator, Juan Castillo, promoted Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator, Sunday. Will be Bowles' first game of the year actually calling the defensive plays. Now, when you look at that defense, they weren't great. They did allow crucial fourth-quarter scoring drives in each of the last two losses, but They've been improved over what they were last year, and they've actually been better than the Philadelphia offense this season. This defense was 11th in the league in points allowed. The offense, meanwhile, currently 30th in the league in points scored. But Andy Reid, head coach, he's an offensive guy. He's responsible for that offense, and obviously he's not going to fire himself. So now that Reid has fired Castillo, there's really nobody left to blame. It's now or never for Andy Reid, now or never for a lot of these Philadelphia Eagles veterans and a lot of people think that they're going to come through with an inspired effort this week because they're listed as one-point favorites right now over the Atlanta Falcons, who are the last remaining undefeated team in the league. Now, the Falcons have, have shown cracks over the last couple of games, nearly lost the Oakland Raiders in their last game, probably should have lost the Raiders in that last game, and their two games prior to that against losing teams, Washington and Carolina, both of those games were very close as well. So a lot of people think the Falcons are, are due for a loss. They've certainly been inching closer and closer to a loss. But is that a good enough argument saying, well, this team is due for a loss? Falcons have been playing a lot better football this year than the Philadelphia Eagles. Not only has Philadelphia lost their last couple of games, I mean, this is one of the worst teams in the entire league to back this year. Only 1-4-1 and one against the spread in their six games this year. So it's a little bit unusual, a little surprising to see Philadelphia installed as a favorite in this game. But I think that Andy Reid's history after a bye week has something to do with this. If you don't know, Andy Reid, the longest tenured coach in the NFL, this is his 14th season as coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. In Andy Reid's previous 13 seasons, the Eagles are a perfect 13-0 coming off a of bye week. So at some point, that's more than coincidence. Reid clearly knows the right buttons to push, motivationally or otherwise, maybe resting the right guys or giving his team the right amount of work or the right amount of rest during the bye week. Reed clearly knows what he's doing <laughs> as far as bye week coaching because his team's, again, 13-0, 11-2 against the spread coming off a of bye week, and they did have a bye last week. They had a bye in which they fired Juan Castillo, as we mentioned. They're 3-3. Three three. I'm sure Reed is painting this as a us-against-the-world scenario where we've got the last undefeated team in the league coming into, the, coming into Lincoln Financial Field, their home stadium. Of course, if the players looked at the line in this game, they realized it might not be up against us against the world. As we said, Philadelphia a one-point favorite on bet deck, so a lot of people seem to think the Eagles are going to break out with a good performance and win this game. And to be honest with you, even though I'm slightly embarrassed to admit it, yes, I am one of those people. I expect to see a different Philadelphia Eagles team in this game. Uh, maybe I've drunk the Andy Reid bye week Kool-Aid, but the Eagles offense, even though they're 30th in the league in points scored, when you look at their yardage, I mean, they've been able to go up and down the field in nearly every one of their games. They just haven't been punching it in the end zone. Michael Vegas had big turnover problems. The Falcons struggle to stop the run, and, and the Eagles have run the ball very effectively this year with LaShawn McCoy, and of course Vic can get out and run himself. So I, I sort of lean towards the Eagles here, minus one at home. I think they're going to be able to really run the ball on this Atlanta Falcons defense. We've seen some real cracks in the Falcons' defense over their last couple of games. Now, I'm a little concerned here, obviously, that I'm selling the Falcons short. I mean, saying that you have faith in a team that has lost a couple of straight games, a team that's 1-4-1 and won this year against the spread, facing an undefeated team, uh, you know, that doesn't sit quite right. And, and certainly, it's, it's not something where I'd say go out and mortgage your house and put it on the Philadelphia Eagles. But I have a feeling we're going to see a good game out of this Philadelphia Eagles team on Sunday. And I wouldn't be surprised if they handed the Atlanta Falcons their first loss of the season.